Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mission Tomorrow Student Challenge for Summer Camps Edition. Uh, this is a staff training for out of school time providers, so youth groups and after school programs or uh, museums, science centers, anybody who's doing stuff outside of the regular school day. If you're a classroom teacher, you're welcome as well, because uh, this stuff could be used in a regular classroom. My name is Oda Lutz, and I work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. And we're the home of the Mars rovers. So that's why we run this Mission to Mars Student Challenge. Um, today, we're recording this webinar, and you can interact with us on the q and a. if you want if you have a question that is related to the Mission to Mars Student Challenge, please type it into the Q&A and we will answer that. My colleagues, Amelia and Joyce are online with me and they'll be mostly handling the Q&A. So today we are talking about surface operations. Uh, hopefully you have done uh, a little bit of research into the Mission to Mars Student Challenge um, and know a little bit about it, but I wanna know a little bit about you so I can, uh, uh, customize this training for you. So we have a few questions. Uh, tell me what grade levels the youth are in your program. Um, you can select more than one grade band. Uh, what kind of program are you running this summer? Um, is it in person? Is it a virtual program or is it a hybrid? Um, and what is your experience delivering science, technology, engineering, and math programs. Are you brand new to it? Have you done it? It's old hat, or are you somewhere in the middle? And then lastly, have you joined us for any of the other trainings? This is our fourth one. Um, wondering if you have been able to join us for all of them, or if you have been able to watch any of them that are recorded on our YouTube channel, or if you're brand new and this is your very first one. We're very excited to have you here. So uh, if you could answer those poll questions, submit those, we'll share the answers here shortly. Uh, we have something for everyone, I hope. Uh, we try to plan these so that they're um, suitable for folks with different varieties of experience um, and also for different grade levels, which is, as you might imagine, a bit of a challenge because uh, early childhood is a lot different than our high school students. So I'll give you another second or two to answer those questions. And um, I do wanna just uh, take a moment to thank you for the work you're doing because um, especially with all of this hybrid learning or even 100% remote, it's, it's a real challenge for educators. And I know as an educator myself that it's, it's can be really tough. <laughs> there can be some really fun things, but it's also it's also kind of a uh, a challenge because it's different than usual. All right. So here are the poll results. Looks like we have folks all over the spectrum for grade levels. I am delighted with that. So hopefully you will get something that you can use for your classroom today. And those looks like the bulk of our, our folks are in the upper elementary and middle school. So that's super cool. Everything we're doing today will be appropriate for those grade bands and we'll make some references to the other grade bands. Um, looks like a bunch of you are doing uh, virtual and at home programs, which is uh, amazing. Uh, good for you and congratulations on uh, the, the accomplishments you're gonna be making with this because I know it's, it's, it can be a challenge. Uh, and experience-wise, we're all over the map too, which is awesome. I love it. I love that we have folks that have done it for a while. Um, you're thinking about doing it. That's awesome. I hope that what we are doing here to, it, with our, our Mission of Our Student Challenge, for those of you who are brand new to this, I hope you will be able to um, use this stuff with your students, even if you've never done it before, because that's, that's kind of how we design these things. We design it for folks who don't necessarily have a whole bunch of experience. If you're one of these people who has more experience, it's a regular part of your program, super cool. You're the, you're the folks we count on to 
take our stuff and run with it, make adaptations, change it for what works in your classroom. Um, you, you know your kids, you know how they respond to these sorts of things and we're, we're excited for you to, to adapt. Um, and it looks like we've got some folks, this is your first time with us, welcome. And uh, for those of you who have been for one or more trainings, yay, thanks for coming back and, uh, and joining us again, really appreciate it. All right, so on with today's presentation. Um, the big idea, we are leading students in designing and building a mission to Mars, and we give you an education plan and all sorts of resources. Um, this URL, go.nasa.gov slash mars-challenge is where all of the good stuff lies, all of those education plans, videos, all kinds of stuff. And I'll take you on a little tour of that later. Um, our goals are to engage youth in all 50 states and our territories and even around the world. Uh, we're particularly interested in uh, involving our underserved communities. And uh, we have some, uh, you'll see some strategies for that in our, in our presentations. And also just kind of, raising the, the awareness of this whole cool thing of landing on Mars. So most kids know about it because it's all over the news and uh, capturing that enthusiasm for your programs can be really, really valuable. Um, so this is a guided seven week plan. Um, if you don't have seven weeks to do it, fine. Do it in a, in a week, do it in a couple days. It's completely customizable. You can pick and choose. It's not sequential per se, like we have it in a sequence that might be helpful for you. But if you don't like our sequence, that's totally cool. Just do what works for you, pick and choose. If you have lots of time on a particular day and you wanna do a, a big you know, 45 minute or two hour activity, cool. If you are like, oh my goodness, something came up, I don't have time. Hey, we've got like one minute videos, literally one minute videos. <laughs> So uh, we have lots of, lots of variety and um, different activities for different grade levels. Um, we start out learning about Mars, if you've watched that training, cool, and then move on to um, uh, planning your mission, building your spacecraft, launching your spacecraft, landing your spacecraft. And now today we're gonna talk about exploring the surface. Um, so we have, two kind of things offered for you this summer, the, these which are the staff trainings, and then we have um, some question and answer sessions by Zoom, uh, over Zoom, uh, with our partners at the Department of Education uh, for your students. So we'll have those in the end of this month and in July. So here's the schedule. Um, as you see on the left, we're a little over halfway through our training. Actually, yeah, next June 17th next week is our last training per se, but then we will have a midsummer check-in, which is where we want you, the staff, to share back with us how things are going. We really want um, those, those uh, stories from what's been successful and we, we just really wanna hear from you because we actually customize our stuff from what we hear from you. So if we hear good ideas, like you've changed something, we, we will ask you if we can borrow that and put it into our lessons. Um, and also we just, we, we get great ideas from y'all. And if something isn't working, we really wanna know how, how to help because if it's not working, we need to change that. Um, students are on the right-hand side here. Um, in two weeks, we have, just under two weeks, we have our first session for youth coming up with, it's called Learn About Mars. And my colleague, Joey Jefferson is going to be interviewed and you get to ask questions. Um, and uh, Joey is a, a deep space network scheduler and knows a whole lot about Mars. And he's a really fun guy. So um, you should sign up for those. Uh, you can sign up on the, um, on the website that you found this program. And then the rest of the youth programs after that, it's pretty much once a week-ish, and it follows the, uh, the, the whole uh, Mission to Mars challenge themes of the week. Um, so what does it take for a staff member to be able to do this stuff with students? Well, it is 
it, it requires the same things that you already probably have as an out of school time professional. You're enthusiastic, you have maybe a little bit of craftiness, the ability to find materials lying around. Uh, you like to get those kids moving, not just sitting. Um, you wanna learn something yourself in addition to this, just the students learning. Um, and that's part of the fun stuff is that you don't have to know everything. Um, you just kind of have to know how to gather materials and um, follow along with our, with our, uh, our, our lesson plans. Uh, the materials, as, uh, as I mentioned, are kind of like off the shelf stuff, okay? It's not like super fancy, you gotta go out and spend your whole paycheck or something on materials. We do a lot of stuff with like print this out and use a rock for this and use a little toy car for this and crayons and pencils and cardboard and string, tape, the basically the stuff that's pretty easy to find lying around. Uh, if you are one of the lucky people and you have fancy equipment, awesome, we have some stuff for you too. Um, and of course, we always want to keep in mind our most important thing is keeping our kids safe because, as you know, that is the most important thing is keeping them safe. All right, so let's go over and take a little tour of the Mars Student Challenge. Um, as I mentioned, this is where all the good stuff is. If you click on education plans, it takes you down to where all the lessons are. Um, and then you can click across here. We've already done learn, plan, design, launch, land, and today we're going to operations. So I click operations. Um, if you wanna um, kick the, the week off right or the this day off right, you start out with this video over here. This is a, um, a video of my colleague Lyle inter interviewing Amila, who's a, one of our engineers and talking about surface operations. What do we do when we're on the planet and how does this work? And it's just, it's under five minutes and it's suitable for showing to kids. And the idea is that the kids get an idea of what we do when we're on Mars. So then they're like, okay, we kind of got that. Um, and then we go into the lessons. Uh, as an educator, you might want to take a look at the newsletter that gives you tips for the week. Um, there are some tips right here, but there's more stuff in the newsletter. Um, but if you click on this week's lessons and activities, we have 13 all together. And as I mentioned, some of them are uh, just a minute long. Um, and some of them are games. Uh, today, we're going to do this Mars Rover Driver board game. I want to take you over there real quickly. Um, it tells you roughly what grade levels this is appropriate for. You could use it a little younger, a little older, um, but it's basically in the uh, upper elementary to middle school range. Um, <clears throat> for this activity, we give you um, some PDFs. We give you the game board, which is a downloadable, just print an eight and a half by 11 and tape it together. Uh, a student worksheet that has all the rules of the game. Uh, we ask you to find some, uh, some markers, any kind of markers. So I mean, flat marbles, rocks, uh, little Legos, whatever, whatever you have. Um, and then um, we have uh, also, you need a little, a little car of some sort for this game. And if you have a little like model car, great. If not, um, and you happen to have a 3D printer, because I know some of you guys do, I do not, but that's super cool if you do. Um, you can download a 3D model of the Curiosity Rover and uh, print that out. Um, and this shows you some tips for management. So this is either a desktop game, or if you're in person, you could actually set this out on a large scale and have it be like a, a, a walkable game. Um, there's some background, a little bit of background, some procedures, more videos to show for the kids, so on and so forth. Um, and then it goes through all of the rules, get down here. And one of the extensions is this Mars Rover game from our, our friends over at NASA Space Place. Uh, I wanna show you this real quickly. It's pretty neat. It is- Ready to drive a rover? A video game and you can, 
you actually drag little things around, you Let's hit go, go, and you command. Drag hands from the bottom boxes and drop them in the upper boxes. So I'm not going to play the game because you'd see how bad I am at it, but uh, your students will be much better at it. Um, and that's kind of a fun, a fun electronic version of this. Um, but for now, we're going to pop back over and take a look at what we're going to do today. We're going to do this Mars Rover Driver board game. And then we're also going to do uh, or take a look at another activity called Describe Rocks Like a NASA Scientist. When we're on the surface of Mars, we're doing a variety of things. First of all, we're driving because we have to find where we are. So that's why we're gonna, we have to find where we're gonna be, where, where we're gonna be doing the science. So that's why we're gonna do the Mars Rover Driver game first. But then once you find your, the location you wanna do the science, you gotta do the science. And most of what we're doing, we're looking at rocks and we're looking for water and we're looking for uh, signs of past life. So there are different activities depending on what your students are interested in. Um, I just picked describe rocks because, hey, I like rocks. Um, so this Mars Rover Driver board game was actually written by one of my colleagues who is a Mars Rover Driver. And she came up with this idea for this game and I really liked it. So we worked to make it uh, into something that would be cool in the classroom. And she went and tried it with some students and it, it folks really liked it. So I'm gonna first talk to you, I'm gonna show you one of those one minute videos. It's a, one of those one minute videos I mentioned and it'll tell you a little bit about driving on Mars. How do rovers drive on Mars? First of all, there's no joystick for driving a Mars rover. Before a rover hits the road, engineers send computer commands overnight, telling it where to go the next day. Depending on how tricky the terrain is, rover drivers have two options. They can send a string of specific commands like drive forward five meters, then turn right 90 degrees. The rover turns its wheels enough times to add up to five meters and then turns in place. Or if it looks safe, they can let the rover think on its own. They write commands like, see that rock over there? Find your way there safely. Then, using two cameras like human eyes, the rover gets a 3D view of hazards such as large rocks and steep slopes. After mapping the danger zones, it plots the safest route to avoid them. Either way, did the rover complete its drive as planned? Engineers double check when the rover sends back a postcard of its new spot on Mars. All right, so you have a little bit of an idea. Um, we do not have a joystick, which is important to note. Uh, you can't just you can't just drive like you're driving a remote control car. You actually send computer commands. Um, and in the video, we talked about obstacles. So you there are places that you don't want the rover to go. You don't want it to run into giant rocks. You maybe want it to go up to the rock, but you don't want it to crash into it. Um, there are cliffs. You don't want it to go off a cliff. There are craters. You may you don't want it to necessarily go into a crater. It could get stuck. Um, we might go into a crater if it's safe to do so, but you got to do some analysis first. So on this game board, this is our, two, I kind of pasted these together already. So this is uh, two eight and a half by 11s pasted together. And we have various obstacles. You see those in gray. Um, those are things you want to avoid. You got to avoid those, those squares. So you see craters, you see mountains, you see all kinds of stuff. Sand trap up there in the upper left. And then you see a start button on the bottom left or a start, start square. And that arrow tells you which way to face your car. And then all those little uh, dots are where you put markers or the rocks that we're gonna collect. So there's green rock, there's a blue, couple of blue rocks, silver rocks, so on and so forth. Um, now the uh, finish line is in the upper right-hand corner. Now, I mentioned that the, the rules are all in the student sheet. I'm not gonna go through the student sheet with you. I'm just gonna tell you the rules as we go along. Um, first thing is you wanna get the most points that you can. And the points are obtained by grabbing rocks. So a silver rock is one point, blue rock, two points, red rock, three points, green rock, four points, and the ever elusive black rock is five points. Now you'd think, oh, no big deal, right? We can do that. Well. When you're setting up your, um, your game board, 
uh, you put your car down there and you can't, this is just a, a what we call a sprite, uh, an image of a one of the rovers. And it's hard maybe if you don't know what, a, what our rovers exactly look like, but this is facing to the right. This uh, big kind of white blob on the back is the power source. That's how you know that's the back. And the next thing is you put your markers on. So these are my little flat marbles. And then we take a look at the rest of the rules. So we have some engineering constraints. This rover cannot carry all those rocks. It can only carry three rocks at a time. So it's got to take three rocks to the finish line. If you have more moves left, you can go back and get others. The other thing is power limitations. So in addition to only being able to carry three rocks at a time, we only have enough energy to do 20 commands in a day. Now the commands tell you where to go. So the forward, the up arrow is um, move forward one square. Reverse is the down arrow, which is move backward one square. And then a left turn, a right turn, but that's on the current square. So you have to make the, you don't just, turn and move, you turn and then move. So if you wanted to move to the square to your left and you're not already pointed that way, you have to turn and then move forward. So that's two commands. Um, and then turn right, kind of same thing. Um, and then if, you're, if you wanna collect that rock, that's another command. So this is different from a regular board game where you just like maybe land on something and that just gets you that that reward. Here you have to command the rover to pick it up. Okay, so we have team roles. So I would suggest doing this with students, a um, group of at very least three students, um, but you can do maybe four or five if you like. Um, one student is the rover. Now that rover is not going to be involved in creating the commands, you're gonna take all the rovers from your class and send them off over to Mars. The rovers are gonna to go to Mars and they're gonna investigate Mars. We have a bunch of links that the students can go and learn a little bit about Mars. And meanwhile, the scientists and engineers are going to be trying to maximize the science return of the mission. In other words, pick up the most rocks. Well, you can only pick up three, but get as many points as you can. And then the engineer has to make sure that the um, that you're you're staying under the engineering constraints, so no more than three rocks and uh, no more than twenty moves. And what what they're doing, what the scientist and engineer is, are doing, is they are writing these commands out. So we're using the little arrows. So a, a, an up arrow for forward, a down arrow for backward, a left or right turn, collect, um, and then. When they're done and they've figured out how to get the most uh, points off their off their board, then the rover comes back and reads the commands. And then either if you're doing it physically in your room in your classroom, they can they can walk around doing these uh, commands, and you can set up the the rocks like to they can actually physically pick them up. Um, and the obstacles could be books or desks or whatever. If you're doing it on the game board. They would move the little car, little rover, and they would pick up the rock as they go. But they have to follow the instructions that the scientist and engineer gave them. They don't get to think for themselves because rovers don't think for themselves so much. They just follow the commands. So the scientist and engineer is going to make this list of commands. The rover is going to come in, pick them up, and do exactly what the scientist and engineer said. If they if their science and engineer made a mistake and the rover is doing exactly what they said, okay, so you don't pick up, maybe there's nothing, you land on a, a square and there's no rock there and they're supposed to pick it up. It's like, well, reach down, pick it up, there's nothing there. It's kind of a wasted move, but it's kind of to teach kids how important programming is. Um, during our next training, we're gonna be doing some scratch programming and uh, this is kind of setting the stage for that. So the best way to learn how to do any game is to just play it. So we're gonna go ahead and play this game a little bit. So I wanna remind you, we're starting in the lower left. We have to end up in the upper right. You can only have 20 commands 
you can have fewer, but you can't have more than 20 commits. And you want to, you can only pick up three rocks. So remember the rocks are of different points. Now, as an example, my favorite color is red. I'm wearing a kind of red shirt today. It's my favorite color. So I'm going to go for red. You might go for silver. You might go for green, whatever you like. I'm going to go for red. It's kind of a medium point value and it's pretty close to where I am. So I want you to think in your head, remember the, um, I'm going to remind you here, the commands. An up arrow is forward, one square, so on and so forth. Now, my rover is already pointed toward the red, so that makes it easy. I don't have to turn first. So in your head, figure out what do we have to do here? Um, what commands, if you were if you were the scientist engineer, what would you be writing down for your rover? Would you be first having them turn? Would you have them go forward? What would you have them do? So I want you to think about that. And I'm gonna tell you the answer in just a second, but I want you to think what commands and how many of them would you do? So I think you'd wanna go forward and you'd probably wanna go forward once, twice, three times, and then pick up the rock. So over here on the right, to get the red rock, you would have this sequence of commands, three up arrows, and then a collect. So if you got those, give yourself a pat on the back, you would be moving your rover over, 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 and then collecting, okay? All right, now, I'm gonna to go to a poll and have you guys tell me which rock we should collect second and so on and so forth. So you vote for me, which one should we go to next? Uh, we're on the red, should we go to green, silver, blue or black next? Uh, what one should we collect after that? And which one should we collect after that? So, Go ahead and vote for me, please. And we're gonna play this game based on what you wanna do. I am giving you control over my future. It's a little scary, isn't it? Mm. Remember, we only have 20 commands and we've gotta get up to that upper right-hand corner. So you might have to think about this. And granted, we're doing this kind of quickly. So if you're like, hey, I don't have time to think about this. Yeah, I know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's that's the downside of the webinar. If we were in person, I'd be like totally giving you time. You'd be like thinking through what do we do, and and in your classroom or your out of school time program, they they'd be thinking about it too. So, all right, let's see. We've got a bunch of votes. I'm going to end the poll, share the results, and see what y'all tell me to do. All right, so looks like the, the next rock we're going for is silver. Now there are several silvers, so I get to pick based on what you decided for the third rock. Third rock, you want the blue one. Okay, cool, that's close to the finish line. That might be a pretty good idea. And the fourth rock, good job for those of you who said none, a rover cannot carry four rocks. Because remember, over there on the right, it says 20 commands three rocks. So you can't collect a fourth. I know we all want those points. So we're like, yes, give me as many rocks as I can take. Eh, sorry, you break the rules. Can't do that. All right. So remind myself what we're doing here. We're going for silver and then blue. Let's see if we can do it. Um, I am going to actually um, Exit my PowerPoint if I can here. Whoops. Let's go back. Um, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do here is try to make this a little bit bigger for y'all. And you said silver. So for silver, I'm first going to have to turn my rover. So here's my little rover. There's turn, now I'm gonna keep track. I'm not gonna write down the commands even though we should be. So we, if we were writing them down, we, that would have been a left turn. So we would have written down this left turn. Now I'm gonna go for this silver up here. So 
I'd have to go forward one. So that's our second command. Two, that's our third command. And now I'm gonna have to turn left again. So turn left, it's our fourth command. And then go forward is our fifth command. And then collect is our sixth command. And now to get over to blue, I'm gonna to have to like turn completely around, which means either left or right turn twice. Okay. So I'm gonna go right. That's another turn. Right again, that's another turn. What am I up to? Seven, eight, I think. And now I need to go forward. There's nine moves, 10 moves, 11 moves, 12 moves. And then I've got to rotate. So a left turn, 13 moves. And remember, these are all things that you would be right, as a, a scientist or engineer, you would be writing. Um, you would be, you would be having, having the kids draw these out. Um, then forward, looks like we're gonna be fine on moves. Capture the blue. That means you have to, you have to say forward and then you have to say collect. So that's two more. I think we're up to like 11. Uh, at least we're plenty, we're plenty good for, for 20. And then forward again, and then a right turn and forward again. Ta-da! We're under 20 rock, under 20 commands, and we have our three rocks. So we had red, which was three points. We picked up one silver and one blue. So three plus one plus two is six. We got six points. Ta-da. And the goal, of course, then would be for different um, different groups in your class to have um, to have uh, different um, You'd have, you'd have different kids doing different uh, game boards and then we would see which one they had that had the best score. And of course you'd want them to have an opportunity to do it again. So they do it once and then they try for a better score and a better score. Um, it can be pretty fun. Now, if you're doing it in person, as I mentioned, you can print these out or you can have a, set up a game board like in even outside, like a, like a, a big maze kind of thing. If you're doing it online, because a lot of you said you're doing this virtually, what I would do is pick your favorite uh, document sharing program. And like I was using a PowerPoint here, maybe you're using Google Slides or any kind of document sharing, whatever, whatever you're using and paste those game board PDFs into Google Slides or wherever and give the students the opportunity to manipulate like you saw my, my movements. Um, with the with PowerPoint, they could you could do screen sharing. So if they're in separate um, locations and they're on a shared document, they can they can move stuff around. And then again, same thing. You're sending the rovers off to do some research, and it's all online research anyway. So they're doing some research. Uh, when the rovers come back to their teams before they move their game pieces, they should be sharing back what they learned. What you know. You, you as an educator, you decide what it is they should share. You can give them, younger kids give them like, you know, specific instructions, find three facts about the Perseverance rover or um, find out three facts about Mars, whatever you like. Uh, for older students, give them a little more latitude. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe you even ask them to find something really specific, like what's the temperature on Mars at the, Curiosity landing site today. So they come back and they share what they've learned. And then, um, then they, the other kids get the benefit of their learning and then they do the, the game. So it's kind of a fun thing. And you can also have them um, trade off what they're, um, what they're doing as far as, um, as, the, uh, as the game is concerned. So Rover doesn't always have to be Rover. All right, so um, as I mentioned, you know, have your upload if you're doing this remotely, upload it to a, a file sharing site. Um, and then if you 
if you want to, you can switch off between teams. If you don't want to have a rover, like if you're remote and you're like, yeah, I feel like that's kind of weird sending one kid off to do something while the other kids are like interacting. And that might be weird. So you could just have the teams working together to create a command sequence and then they trade command sequences from team to team. And then the other team has to follow their command sequences and decide you know, whether or not that worked. Um, a lot of us in our classrooms, uh, if you're in person, have those, those square tiles that are like a foot square. I remember just about every classroom I taught in had those. And you could use those as the, the marking squares. Or if you are outside, you could use chalk um, or tape down on carpet, whatever works if you're doing a life-size game board. All right, next activity is describe rocks like a NASA scientist. This might sound kind of like hard because it's, you know, like kind of a geology thing, but I wanna show you this cool thing. Um, this is designed for students to interact with directly. We have an educator guide. If you go over to the educator guide, this is designed for in-person. This is an old NASA activity called edible rocks. You're not really eating rocks, okay? Um, and of course, in the classroom, anything that you give them to eat, you have to be really careful about. So, you know, mind, mind the safety there with food allergies and such. So maybe they don't even eat the stuff, but it's using candy bars um, and field notes about uh, different types of candy representing different types of rocks um, and give you all sorts of, of suggestions. And basically the kids use geologic terms to describe the candy bar. So it's not geologic terms, uh, or it's not, you don't, you don't get to say it's caramel. You don't get to say it's peanuts. You have to say things like rocky inclusions. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of fun um, and a little bit nerdy. Uh, but back over here, the student version of it, um, we want students to understand a little bit about why we study rocks. Um, it tells us, um, for your information, it tells us about the past, what happened there. We care about what happened on Mars because we think there was, well, we're certain there was a global ocean at some point. Well, what happened to it? And if there was a global ocean, was there life in that ocean? Because, you know, life is in our oceans. So we, the, the rocks hold the key to the past of a planet. And that's what we're what we're interested in seeing here. Um, so this again, designed for students, and this is not going to be for your kindergartners, right? This is pretty pretty higher level. So you're you're going to be looking at your your middle, elementary, and up. Um, we learn how we study Mars. You can read about the images here, and then this right here. This is actually really cool for your middle and high school kids, learning some of the geologic vocabulary. Now, I don't, I don't, they don't necessarily need to memorize it. They just need to be able to reference it here. So what does luster mean? I, that, is there any sixth grader out there who uses the word luster? Well, probably not unless they have some reason to in, in you know, their parents are into rocks or something like that. Um, so we go through all these different uh, terms. We define them. We give you pictures of what these mean. Um, funny words like blebs. Who knew that was a scientific word? Um, so, and things like you, you're probably familiar with homogeneous, heterogeneous. What does that mean in rocks? Friable, what does that mean? And then here are the candy bars again. <laughs> so with the candy bars, what we did is we took some pictures of the cross sections. We chopped these candy bars in half so we could see the cross section and, and imagine that it's not something delicious. This is a rock, you're looking at the rock. And we have this cool little quiz. So here says, the sample appears to be highly friable. Oh, if you don't know what that means, just scroll back up and look at friable. It means flaky and easy to fall apart. Um, with large inclusions, um, inclusions, if you don't know what those are, go, again, scroll back up to the vocabulary, take a look. But what they are is like rocks inside of rocks. So um, big, like kind of, kind of blobs, not blebs, blobs. Um, and they're distributed heterogeneously. 
So if you don't know what heterogeneously is, again, go up and take a look. So it's really fancy vocabulary, but we have the, the reference right there. So this is a good op opportunity for kids to learn new vocabulary and context, which is really an important English language art skill. Um, so it says, it appears to be highly friable with large inclusions distributed heterogeneously. Choose the picture that best matches the description above. So on the left, we have this candy bar with a smooth shell, wide base, and thin layers of fine tan material. And this candy bar with a lumpy shell covering a nut-filled interior surrounded by caramel. Well, this question to me is hard <laughs> because the one on the left is friable looking, but we don't necessarily see large inclusions. One on the right, it's hard to tell if it's friable, maybe it is, but it definitely has the large inclusions. And I would probably choose the one on the right. If you choose the one on the left, let's see. Uh, oh, it's gonna give us our answer, uh, the answer later. So it'll tell us, it'll tell us the answer and it'll tell us an explanation. But I actually think it's the one on the right. Some of our quizzes give you the answer right away. Some of them wait. So there's a whole bunch more of these. This one has a dull luster and appears friable with the presence of cleavage planes. Um, cleavage planes, it's a, it's, um, if you're familiar with mica, the way mica flakes off into uh, like little flat pieces. Um, so you can go through here and it's just a whole bunch of, of questions that give you an opportunity to, um, to uh, answer them. Now, I'm not gonna read them all. I'm just gonna go through and like randomly guess because I'm just kind of, you know, having fun here. When you submit, it will give you, says your response has been recorded, view score. It tells you the answer. The first one, we got it right. Yay, okay. The second one, I just guessed and got it right. Yay me, look at that. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. I even got the next one right and I totally guessed. Seriously, I have no idea. It tells you what's, oh, and then I missed the last one, which would make sense, so I'm totally guessing. Um, and so it gives you feedback and tells you why the one on the right was correct. And of course you could try it again. So this is kind of a, just, it's a fun learning activity in a variety of ways. If you keep going, we have a real rocks quiz. We're moving on from candy to the real world. So this one, these, um, again, similar kind of descriptions, very low luster with large and numerous vesicles throughout the structure. You get to choose. Um, so on and so forth, it runs the same way, okay? So uh, we basically transition you from candy to real rocks. I know candy is more fun, right? But real rocks are super cool. And that's what we're discovering on Mars or, or what we're researching on Mars is we're researching the rocks um, because they will hopefully tell us a little bit about the past of Mars. So if you're online, use this version. If you're in person, use the, you could use this version as well, but you could also use that, uh, the actual candy bar lesson. And if you happen to have rocks uh, at your disposal, use the, the rocks you can come in contact with. If you are not a rock person yourself, this might be an opportunity to bring in a special guest. There are a lot of amateur rock hunters out there so folks who are fascinated by rocks, um, you may have a rock club in your town. Um, don't, don't think that you don't because you haven't heard of them because sometimes there'll be these clubs out there we've never heard of. And a lot of times these folks are, are interested in sharing their hobby. Um, so check into having them come talk to your students about rocks and, and what we can learn from rocks. Be a, a fun opportunity to, to give kids a, some career exposure. All right, so I'm gonna wrap us up here. My friend Leslie is um, off doing another program today and she is normally with us and talks about her blog that she has on Boost Cafe. If you log onto Boost Cafe and check out her blog, she talks about, she does a blog several times a year and talks about um, different uh, lessons we have going on and, and tips for using NASA resources without school time. And 
My colleague Amelia is on with us today, and Amelia is the Museum and Informal Education Alliance Master. Amelia, you want to talk to us about my alliance? Yeah, thank you. So um, Museum and Informal Education Alliance is designed for educators who are working at informal institutions like museums, libraries, science centers. Um, any of you on this call who are educators are welcome to join. The link is there and I'll put it in the chat. It's a free community of practice. We help you figure out what is useful to you and what you can um, use with your audiences. Cause we know NASA is, there's a lot at NASA. So we try to help you out. All right, thanks Amelia. And I wanna just add my, my personal uh, promotion of my Alliance. I'm a big fan of my Alliance. These um, trainings that they have, they have these really cool briefings um, that you can participate in live. And um, in fact, I participate in a lot of them just kind of because I want to learn. There'll be a, a you know a talk about a particular thing that I need to learn more about because I can learn about all kinds of stuff. There, even if I think I know a lot about a pro topic, every time I turn in, tune into a my alliance webinar, I learn more. So I would encourage you to sign up for my alliance and participate in some of those trainings. They're fun. Um, you can just kind of sit in the back and you know listen, or you can uh, interact and ask questions. All right. And with that, I am going to leave you for the day. Um, thanks again for your time. Hope that you are able to use some of the stuff. I know we're rapidly approaching summer. Some of you already may have your summer programs going. Um, I know that a lot of schools here in the West are start stopping school this week um, or even next week, but a lot of them are this week. So summer programs start next week. But if you're in the East, I know that, or the South, I know that the uh, programs often start earlier. You end school earlier and you start school or start summer programs earlier. So please check out go.nasa.gov slash Mars challenge and check out the activities and join us next time for our, um, we're gonna do our um, sample acquisition and we're gonna do some uh, um, scratch programming training. So have a wonderful day and thanks again for joining us.